An oak is a living thing. But look closely, and you'll see that an oak is also home to a whole community of smaller living things. Creatures can be found on every part of an oak. Some live and work deep down in the ground. Others make their home way up high in the sky. Squirrels munch on the fruit. Fungi grow on the leaves. Insects gnaw on wood or nibble on leaves, or even tunnel inside of them. Many moths spend their lives on a single oak. But a bird may pass by for only a moment, just enough time to pick up a snack. Some kinds of insects can even trick the tree into growing a special nursery just for them. We call these nurseries galls. A tiny larva develops inside. The birds, squirrels, insects, fungi, and the oak form a living network, a food web. They depend on one another for food and shelter. As the seasons change, the oak changes, and the rest of the community changes too. Many insects wait out the winter in the ground beneath the oak. In spring, the oak's leaves unfurl and its flowers bloom. The community comes to life and new visitors begin to arrive. Spring is a busy time for leaf eaters when the leaves are soft and fresh. Plump insects, in turn, become a good source of protein for newly hatched chicks and also for parasitoids. Some mothers lay their eggs on or inside the larvae of another species. Then, their babies have a tasty meal close by. As spring turns to summer, a new generation emerges. Autumn brings falling acorns and hungry birds. And then, again, comes winter. Every member of the community has its own seasonal cycle. To survive, each species depends on getting its timing just right. But now, the Earth's climate is changing. The seasons are starting to shift. Plants and animals are changing in some ways, too. With a warmer environment, insects might grow a little faster. Leaves might open a bit earlier, but not early enough. Even small changes in timing can disrupt the food web that keeps the community together. Humans also depend on these natural cycles. We've studied the timing of seasonal patterns in nature, or phenology, for a long time. From these records, we can see that many cycles are shifting, and not always in the same way. We can tell that certain events are happening earlier or later than they used to. Now, we're trying to learn more about what this means for plants and animals, including us. The challenge is big. So what can we do? For one thing, we can keep watching. We can learn about what's happening in our own backyards and help scientists keep track of these changes. And we can work to make sustainable choices in what we do every day. Because all of us, from the smallest wasp to the biggest oak, are part of the same community. <laughs>